Now, if you've studied chemistry before, you're probably wondering at this point, well, how does this all relate to all the S, P, and D orbitals that you learned about in chemistry? So to get there, let's start by looking at the wave function of an electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. So we can use Schrodinger's equation to show that the wave function for a ground state electron is given by psi of r is equal to 1 over the square root of pi times a to the 3 on 2, all times e to the minus r on a, where a is the Bohr radius, which is 5.291 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, or we can write it as 52.91 picometers. So even though this is named after Bohr and Bohr's theory was incorrect, it did end up with the some of the correct values. And so this Bohr radius is a very useful length to deal with when we're talking about atoms. So the wave function of the electrons in the ground state isn't really anything physical. If we want to get something physical, then we know that we need to square it to get the probability. So by squaring this wave function and accounting for the geometry, we can come up with a function that describes the probability of finding the electron at each radius as we move away from the nucleus. So it turns out that for the ground state, the probability, P of R, is given by 4 over A cubed times R squared e to the minus 2R on A, where A again is the Bohr radius. So you can see a graph of that function here. So at the peak of the graph, that's the most probable radius for the electrons to be found at. So roughly a Bohr radius. Most of the electrons are located there. So if we draw a little graph showing dots of where the electrons most likely to be found, for this ground state with n equals 1, L equals 0 and ML equals 0, we end up with a graph like this, which is just your s orbital for that ground state. So you can see the electrons are, the probability is a spherical function. Now for the more excited states, so for n equals 2, we can do a similar thing and it turns out that if we have n equals 2, l equals 0 and ml equals 0, we end up with a probability distribution which looks like this. So once again, it's a circle. So this is another s orbital. In fact, it turns out that whenever l equals 0, we have an s orbital. So the in n equals 2, we can also have the l equals 1 orbital. So in that case, we can have l equals 1 and we can have ml equals 0 or ml equals plus or minus 1. And these are the probability distributions of the electrons that you see in that case. So these are our p orbitals. So p orbitals are the ones with l equals 1. And then d orbitals are the ones with l equals 2.